I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Welcome to part two of the uh, restoration of the Zenith um, 5R086 uh, phonograph radio. Uh, today is a bit of dismantling. Uh, I'm going to take the... Actually, it doesn't look like I have to take that off. I'm going to take it off anyway because I might replace it. But the, the uh, discussion, the little brass front panel and then turn the radio over and, and start to pull the radio chassis itself, uh, leaving the uh, phonograph in place, I hope. Uh, we'll see. It looks to me like the speaker, which is right here, is actually lodged up in behind the, the turntable. I hope that's not the case, but it might well be. So we'll, uh, we'll start with the discussion and, and uh, work from there, see what happens. The brass plate of discussion is held on by two very tiny Phillips head screws, which I'll see if I can get out here uh, without stripping them. Boy. And a bigger screwdriver, I think. Let's see. It would just upset me if I tore the... Yeah, it feels like I'm going to. I may leave that in place and work on it later since it's going to be difficult. Oh, this one's coming. Man, the screws have seen better days. Well, this whole radio has. 1947. Uh, radio is just a year older than I am. And we're both about in the same shape. <laughs> so I'll uh, continue to work on this. No point in you watching this. Well, I'm going to have to postpone this. Um, it's not necessary. It looks like I can pull the chassis without um, having this off. But this little Phillips head screw here, this brass plated screw, is stripped out. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, I expect, is, is get my Dremel tool out and cut a slot in it so I can use a, a standard flat blade and try to work it out that way. I don't particularly want to drill it out because I don't want to damage this. I mean this is this can be cleaned up and uh, reused and I'd hate to tear it up in any way. So I'll just try to I'll postpone this until later and uh, fix it then. So on to the radio itself. I have to turn this chassis over and a little closer examination of the bottom of the cabinet reveals um, some um, veneer missing here, which will have to be replaced. And over here too on the back, looks like there's a piece missing uh, there as well. But that will go back on after the cabinet's re-glued uh, re together. Now the other thing that I'm a little puzzled about is it looks like on the inside here there's a staple right there and another one there and it looks to me like there was some piece of wood in there holding something in. I can't tell if it went all the way around the cabinet and up this side. It doesn't look like it. But it looks like something fit in here. So it had a bottom at one point. Um, I'm guessing. I'll have to find, see if I can find a picture of the bottom of the one that's restored somewhere. So that's going to have to be fixed. Okay, the removal of the, uh, the radio chassis itself out of the cabinet is, it looks to me like, it's take this connector off. It connects to the power and signal for the turntable. And then there are two screws, one here and one here, holding the chassis in. But it looks to me like two, uh, those will only work if you want to slide the chassis straight up in there and that will impinge uh, on the turntable. So the turntable would have to be out first. There are two screws here and here, here and on this side, that look like it holds this whole piece here. So I'm going to start by taking those, those four screws out and see what comes loose then. 
Let's see, let's hope that these aren't as... Oh no, that's pretty easy. Well, the other thing I noticed is here, it looks like there's a nail here and what appears to be a nail here, but in fact, those I bet were feet. They had rubber around them and the rubber is long gone and all that's left is this nail thing sticking out. So those will have to be uh, removed and replaced as well. Because who wants nails sliding around in there on their other furniture? I don't. Yeah, so that might come loose. We'll see. Oh yeah, there it is. Those are just plain old wood screws, but they look like they're original, so I don't want to uh, replace them with new ones unnecessarily. I like to put everything that came out of out of the uh, cabinet back in if it's useful. Okay, it's a simple plug that goes from the uh, boy, it's stiff. Simple plug that goes from the turntable to the uh, radio chassis. Let's see if this will fish out of there without tearing anything up. Ah, success. Oop, I forgot to unplug the uh, antenna. The wave magnet. Let's see. Pair of pliers. The third one is this one that was cut. I don't know if this, yeah. The, the third antenna line is the one that was cut. It might be the center tap, I'm not sure. Here, uh, and it goes back in there, and I can't figure out, it must be going to this wave magnet antenna. So guess what, I'm gonna have to cut it again. That's probably where it was cut in the first place is I can't take the chassis out without uh, cutting that wire. So. Here's our chassis. I'll set it up here and show it to you. First, we'll take a quick look inside the, the uh, box itself. There's the screen, the uh, speaker cloth, and as I said before, it looks pretty good from this side. It might have been replaced once, but it's hard to tell. It's a nicely cut hole for it. This is a piece of plastic that was the shield or the uh, cover for the dial plate, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, all stapled in, and it's very yellowed. I'll, I'll have to replace that, but that will be trivial. Here's the back side of the brass discussion here. Uh, otherwise, just cobwebs. Okay, here is the video chassis out. Well, it's first stage of removal anyway. Um, the dial plate is okay. It's it's uh, black. It feels like paper. It is paper. So this is black paper uh, with the the uh, numbers um, on it. Speaker looks okay. I don't see any obvious damage. I don't hear grinding in there. So speaker's probably just fine. Um, this button here is used to change the record, so that's the, the uh, turntable um, uh, record changer. Um, this button is for, oh I've forgotten, yeah this button is for phono and radio, that's what that is. And then this is the, oh, that is weird. Uh, I've never seen an on-off switch on the tuning, oh, the in, tuning indicator is the inner ring here. 
and the on-off and volume switch is the, uh, or the, the tuning is the outer ring, the, the uh, on-off and volume is the inner ring. The problem is the, um, when you turn the volume, you're also turning the tuning dial, uh, which probably isn't designed. Oh, I see. There's a stop right here that's out. There's a spring piece of spring steel here that looks like it's supposed to hold this while you turn this. Um, so that may be a flaw. Um, on top, the uh, tuning condenser, um, tube spaces. Uh, this I got this without any tubes, but I got a. I uh, found a source on on the uh, web for a nicely tested set of uh, full complement of tubes that go in this radio. Uh, courtesy of who was it? Lawrence Reed in Cedar Falls, Iowa. And they're pre-tested. I tested them again. They tested out fine. So thank you, Lawrence, for providing those. Um, we can't see what's inside, so I've got to do one more step of uh, this assembly by taking these two, uh, two bolts out here. And once I do that, I'll rejoin you. Winter finally has arrived. Well, our version of winter has arrived in the Portland area. The temperature dropped into the low 30s last night, which is our first taste of, of cold weather um, this year, and not our last. The good news is it's not raining. It's a beautiful sunny day outside, um, so that's a, that's the upside of that the current weather situation. Okay, and there it is in all its glory. Boy, there's not much going on in there. As I said before, this is a an American uh, um, five no power transformer. Uh, the heaters on the tubes. Um, sink the house voltage. A bunch of really sticky, waxy caps in here all have to be replaced. That one might have been, I can't tell if that's a Zenith part or not. It doesn't appear to me to be. It's not. It's solar. So this is a solar cap and there's another one hiding back here that have been probably already replaced at some point in the past. Um, boy, a pretty smoked resistor right here. Let's see if I can get this closer for you. This guy right here is uh, pretty toasty. Pretty toasty looking. And I don't know what that was. Whatever that was, it's melted and gone away. Um, oh, there's the the end of this button, I think, is somehow up in there, too. How very odd. Well, there's work to be done. Uh, the electrolytic, I'll start here. The electrolytic uh, is not a zenith part. It looks like CDE, I don't know it. And the readings are kind of odd. 30 to 50 microfarads each, three of them in there, at 150 volts. Um, so I don't know, kind of a puzzle there. Uh, there's that burnt up something. It looks almost like a, boy, it's really destroyed. Looks like it might have been the end, oh, it's the end of this cap. So, <laughs> guess what blew up? This old waxy cap blew itself apart. Well, that's a good reason to take it out of there. Um, yeah, so all these caps have to be pulled. I have to check through the values of the resistors. This one here, as I said, looks really carbonized. Probably when this went. Not sure. Uh, so there's work to do. An addendum. Um, I was looking more closely at this cap that exploded. There's... Um, there are the two ends, or the two pieces of it right there. And I noticed that the power cord, which is, which is really shot, I mean, that's seriously gone. Um, it 
appeared to me yeah appeared to me to be I bet this is this the so-called safety cap um, that's supposed to protect you if you this is a hot chassis <laughs> it's all American 5 hot chassis and they put a safety cap so that if you're lucky and you plugged it into the wall Correctly, you'd be okay, uh, but it didn't it didn't help at all if uh, you plugged it in the wrong way. And I bet the safety cap, uh, it would be fine if it were plugged either way, except when the cap shorts. And if the safety cap shorts, it blows itself to pieces, as this one so clearly has done. Um, so I bet that's what the that's what that damage is is the safety cap. So I'm hoping the rest of it. Uh, didn't get torched by that happening. We'll find out. Uh, before I close out the whole episode, though, I wanted to take a quick look at this uh, label. The label is in really good shape. It's even legible, sort of, except for the gunk that's all over it. Um, so what I want to do is see what it looks like in one corner of it, or this edge here. I'll see what what might clean that off. It might be as simple as water, which I have here, or some plain old rubbing alcohol here, or um, goof off. And as this label says, it takes off the finish, <laughs> which it will do. So let's take a look and see what will what will help clean that up. Just a cotton swab with a little water right here. It'd be great if that were to do it. Say paint restorers do this, except they're much more gentle. They roll, they roll the swab back and forth, but this is not a work of art. Water helps. It's not great, but it helps. See what the uh, rubbing alcohol does. I have a feeling that the oops or the gooby gone or whichever, this is oops, I guess. I have a feeling that using that will cause uh, some damage. I suspect it will um, remove the print. Rubbing alcohol doesn't work any better than the water did, I don't think. Doesn't look to me like it's working any better. So, I'll see if this oops, oops will do the trick or not. I've always had a gripe with this particular kind of um, lid. It's supposed to have a little squirter there, which, unless you have fingernails, which I don't, I can almost never get this thing up. I have to use a screwdriver every time I... I'm going to use this can, which is a pain in the neck, so I don't like that. Not that it matters. Okay, whoop. Paper towel. I guess I'll try it right here, since that's where I spilled it. Boy, I am out of things to try. This just may be the way it is. I might be able to find a better copy online and, and create a new one. I guess I could do that. Um, here's the um, tube layout. Probably can't really, I can barely make it out right here, so you probably can't read it at all. No, I can't make it out either. I can just tell that's what it is. And there's the Zenith radio logo. And patents, I presume, since this is really fine print. Yeah, I expect so. Anyway, that's all for this program. Uh, next time we'll uh, have the uh, 
caps in, out and replaced and the resistors tested and replaced as necessary and then we'll see where we go from there.